Hey everybody, we're back. This is part two with Peter Berman. We're gonna continue the fun. Thanks for being here. <laughs> well, this is my mom, Nellie. Yay, yay. <laughs> Say, welcome to the podcast. We're good to my daughter, what? Podcast. 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 I know, podcast. That's a weird name. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Find the Funny, a new episode with my guest, Peter Berman, a hilarious comedian and friend of mine. He also actually helped me on my documentary, which is called Don't Wait, the Michael Schmidt story. And we renamed it mm. to The Funny Thing About Death. Everybody, say hi to Peter. It's hey, Peter Berman. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited you're here. I'm excited to be here. So that you guys know that long story short, the documentary is about a man whose dying wish was to perform stand-up comedy. Um, and he asked me to help him. And I assembled um, an amazing group of comedians to help me write jokes for Michael. Is he gonna say this, what the disease is? is this is Karen Rontowski. Uh, There's Johnny like, Sanchez. Like, go, I don't know what it is. Uh -oh. Leo did that joke about, uh, I have PLS and um, you know, it's, I can't even get the cool disease. Everybody knows about ALS, you know. That's Leo Flowers yeah, saying that. Yeah. This is Alonzo like, Bowden. Less known disease. Right, right. You didn't even get the <laughs> good right, disease. Right, right. Here's right. Becky yeah. Pettigo. One that nobody right. knows about. Actually, Brian, do you want to deliver a couple of jokes? This is my buddy, Brian I Kiley. Like I had a busy day. Uh, I returned my Fitbit. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes strangers will say to me, you've got it easy. And I say, you mean the wheelchair? Or the diaper. <laughs> Here. <laughs> it's the, that, that one is good. So here's Michael killing the joke during his set. Can't wait. It's still going to be funny, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes strangers say dumb things to me. Like, you've got it so easy. And I say, you mean the wheelchair or the diaper? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna say that, you better laugh. <laughs> okay, Spizza, let's go to. Um, Wait, I have, I have another question for you. Yes. What What's that like, though? You're, you know, you're, you know, you're personally rooting for him. Yeah. And you're sitting there holding the mic, and you have yes, you have no say in the matter. I mean, that must have been that must have. I'm, I'm assuming probably one of the most nerve wracking times you've ever been on stage, right? Yeah. Oh, by far. Yeah. I mean, powerless to we, a point. Right. Right. Because we work on maintaining some level of control. Right. And you have none. You're yeah. just watching your friend, and you want it to go well. Uh huh. And you want it to go well for him. Right. And and I know we're filming this, and I know he's doing his thing, and everybody's watching. But I would pull the microphone down and be like, "Slow down." Oh, you would. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, because I was like, "Slow down," and I'm trying to do it like where they don't see my lips moving because you know when we get nervous, you automatically start rifling through your material. And I was like, if you just give that, that tag a beat, it's going to destroy. But if you talk right through the laughter, they're going to stop laughing because they need to hear what you're saying. That's another layer of this whole situation, right? right. So I was asking another layer is all the time you guys are spending and effort you're putting into just being friends and it's yeah. being friends around this. And, right. um, it's like a moment in like a movie, right? It's a moment yeah. that, uh, you know, yeah. you're, you think one way, he thinks another way, and he trusts you. And the most amazing part is at the end, even the day before he passed, I was in bed with him, just, you know, talking with him about, because I knew I, I had very limited time left, but just being there and is there anything you want to talk? It's like, how, how do you say goodbye to a person the day before their death like ah i know it just seems like so much um uh tension that it, uh which is why we're just this, t this tension all the time there's this tension on uh how he's gonna do there's this tension on how he's gonna live his life there's a tension on how much time you have with one another at the same time we used comedy even at the end mm -hmm. even when right before he was dying i saw him in so much pain we were laughing Great. we were like crying with the pain part but we were crying with the laughing part yeah you think real life's really happening until real life is really happening ah. then you're like whoa this yeah. is real life whoa yeah. this is yeah, this stuff, is really when, death stuff feels like it's a fucking scene in a movie you're like okay this yeah. is um yeah, yeah. 
And it was very interesting because he had family members, friends. So people came into the venue, like his family was crying when they came in. Yeah. Knowing that I think happy and also very nervous because they didn't know me. They didn't know if I was going to humiliate their yeah. dad or, mm -hmm. or brother or mm -hmm. people flew in from other parts of the country mm -hmm. knowing that he was doing this. And it was a tremendous amount of pressure mm -hmm. to help him kill and yep. also just be like, be there for him as a friend. And also before the set, he was suffering physically. Like he was having twitches and pain in his legs. And he's like, I'm not going to take morphine today because I know it'll make me really slow and out of it. Yeah, was so he was dealing with the yeah. pain while he was on stage and telling me, okay, if my leg goes in the spasm, this is how you hold it down. I'm like, whoa, I'm not a nurse, dude. Yeah. I'm yeah. writing dick jokes here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I, you know, like, so I had 10 different levels of anxiety dealing with his parents. A news crew came, uh, making sure that someone was there to have a teleprompter for him. What if he wasn't getting laughs? You just did everything, but then putting on a smile going. Yeah. But then the joy, sometimes what I'm laughing at is not necessarily the joke because I know the joke. It's that he's enjoying it and they're laughing at him and I'm just so happy. Like I was well, just so full of, I'm like, he's doing I it. I love documentaries yeah. and I think a lot of people do. And if you're in a weird way, if you're fascinated about a documentary, then maybe, uh, we, maybe we should go into a whole new new genre the the documentary of the making of the documentary, documentary yes. like, like that's exactly where, like where where does the enthusiasm and inquisitiveness end really yeah. like all the stuff yeah. you're talking about the layers. it's like almost as interesting as yeah. yeah so yeah we'll go into a new thing we'll we'll make documentaries of everyone making documentaries <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> as long as I don't have to shoot it yeah. Oh, yeah I'll talk but I don't want to shoot we don't want to edit yeah. Um, this is the other joke that he had a problem with that was absolutely by far my favorite joke of the show. And he's like, I don't think I can say that because it's not true. And I go, do you think comedians oh my. say the truth when we're on stage? <laughs> the joke that we started writing is probably based in truth of what we feel about that subject, but we exaggerate all the time. So Bill Dwyer and I wrote this joke and I had to convince Michael that it was funny and appropriate. He's like, but it's not true. Ooh, I can't wait so to see. So here's this joke. It's my favorite joke of the whole set. <laughs> Some people say dumb things when they see me in my wheelchair. I'd like to get one of those babies. And I say, I can walk. This is just for my enormous cock. <laughs> That's why he said, who knew? Because he... <laughs> <laughs> and it was just fascinating to see him because when we write jokes, it's the same thing. We don't know how big of a pop it's going to get. We don't know if it's going to kill or not. We know it might be funny, but we're like, it's just a nugget of a thing. We haven't run it in front of a live audience. Well, it also, they, you know, there's a random group of people at a show. Yeah. I mean, even this one, it's a random yeah. group of people. You have no idea what their sensibilities are. Right. I mean, I, I've, I've told people and I've talked about it with other comedians, you know, you might, you know, you know there might be a, a crowd and they're, they're like slapping their knees or we'll call them a 10, right? right. They're like, right. But the, you might just have a group of people that is, they're, qu they're quieter. Yeah. But it's also a 10. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like the knee slapping is not the only 10. Like, right. It, so there's all these variables. Yeah. And, if you have been doing comedy for what, like at least, I don't know, probably 10 years at least, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, it has to probably be at least 10 years that you're like, okay, I've, I've seen the whole, a, a gamut. Right. And then everything after that is more and more information about that. He's telling these jokes. He has no frame of reference other right. than he's telling jokes. Right. I mean, he has no frame of reference, right? He's so that's like a whole nother, Right. And yeah. So even when it's all happening, even laughing, these things that you're saying, he didn't expect it or the, yeah. he, it's all new. Yeah. It's all new. Yep. And he has no frame of reference right. to no, know and some of these huge jokes. How would he know yeah. what a, yeah. what a big, huge room full of people laughing 
feels like or sounds like. Oh my gosh. It, it was, it was so magical to watch him knowing that this is his dream. Cause he's a funny guy. He used to make people laugh in his life, but that, be, that transition from being the funny guy at a party to actually getting yeah, on a stage. A room full is of people, right? Real I mean, different. He, it's like, you're just, he, it must've just felt like you, well, that's the other, other thing besides you being nervous, you're right there next to him. I mean, I'm assuming you have, you have a, you you have a different understanding of what that all meant to him right. despite the crowd laughing right you know all these inside he didn't know right. this one or that right. one which that's a whole nother thing i mean a lot of times people come see us right and they might not like someone's joke or they might like someone's joke but as a comedian we know the truth about that joke right we know the truth about that joke and that uh i always feel like that's what's really cool to uh whether the crowd likes it or not is to know like oh that's like a big thing that that person we know just said yeah and it's also a big thing that it got a laugh or it doesn't matter that it didn't get a really laugh or right whatever the case may be right i think oh yeah it's it's just such a fantastic fascinating process what we do was he in a lot of pain he looks to me like besides he's enjoying himself he looks like he's having I think what he was going through was nerves. Like he was really nervous. He was thinking he was going to forget. Um, he was in pain, but I, you know how we've performed before when we've gone through something traumatic in our life or, or something happened to a loved one or whatever. And we get on stage, we're dealing yeah. with pain. Yeah. Um, and sometimes physical pain. I've gone up on stage really sick. Yeah. I, sometimes you don't know which is worse the physical pain or the emotional pain but maybe you're going through heartbreak or someone that you love past and you're like well, i can't I, i'm supposed to be funny right now i gotta portray this other side of me um but then somehow meld the three things the your regular act reality what you're going through actually and what they're going through like where they're at so yeah. that's four things, I what guess. What I've found when I'm aware to uh, put it into play is the, um, well, and we're all different. I mean, we're all different people. We're all different comedians. Right. We have all different ways that we approach it. For me, what I, when I'm aware of this, what I appreciated was, um, you know, like you could go do your exact same act and you could be angry and mm -hmm. you could do all your jokes mm -hmm. with an angry subtext. And they all work and you get to get out some anger. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, or uh -huh. you could do it whichever way, sad or yeah. slower or mm -hmm. more energetic. You could do right. all the same stuff in it and it works differently for whatever reason. And I think if you're doing that, then that's what people vibe on. And I, I always did um, appreciate uh, the little bit of escape that we could have up there by doing that. Even, uh -huh. even the exact same act with just be, being right where you are. So yeah. I always uh, enjoyed that. I found that part more kind of therapeutic than, right. but it also changes, I don't know. Because you've been doing it a really long time. Well, there's so many variables that people don't understand about stand up. They yes. really don't, right. they really don't understand. I, I'm never that like, I don't, I don't, you know, put it on a pedestal or I'm going to use the word grandiose for the sick twice in the same day. <laughs> I don't even ever Two use times, it, but, guys. but there's so many, you know, I mean, there's one whole chunk of what you're trying to do in your mind as a human. Right. You know, which is everybody's trying to do that every day. Right. And that's a lot for a lot of people, just that. And then what you're trying to do with your act, what your intention is with your act, that's like a whole nother layer. And then what you're trying to do to this group of people that, I used to think we had a lot of control over them, but I don't think we do. I don't think we have as much control over no. them as we think we do. I yeah. think it's more, I used to think we had a lot of control over them and we do, but I think that it's more when the student is ready, the teacher appears. I think, you know, our, yeah. I think we're just supposed to put it out there. Yeah. But we don't think that a lot of times because you were very goal, very goal oriented. You know what? I, I don't think you know this. Sorry to interrupt you. I don't think that you know this, but during the taping, after we did the round table, I think that you noticed in me that I was so stressed out and you took a minute, the things that you said to me after the round table, 
were so fantastic and really helped me get out of my head yeah, because I, I, I'm I, a perfectionist. Yeah, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember that. I, I remember noticing that you were just was, trying, um, yeah, all the stuff you mentioned earlier I that you wanted. I was overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, knew, I knew it would be great. Whatever you did yeah. would be great. Yeah, and yeah. you were just like, this is already great. It this is, is yeah. already good. Yeah. It's out of your control. He's going to do his dream. Yeah. But you just assuring me that me being there and doing what I was doing was enough. But uh, That was but enough. I'm going to be super corny, but isn't that life? Yeah. What yeah. we're all doing is enough. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It is. And it doesn't matter. We, right where you are is right where you are. Right. So. Yeah. And I was a stuck but, in but, the... but even as standups we go on, like that, that's not enough. And like, well, what are you going to do about it? Like in that moment, what are you going to do about it? When you go on stage or he went on stage or whatever night we go on stage. Yeah. What, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to write a brand new act? Right. Do, just, or, or are you just going to go try to do what you do? to the best of your ability. But then sometimes we can't do that because it's uh, all the voices or the whatever or the reaction or whatever. Right. But I mean, it's, uh, we're all, I, I hate when all those stupid corny sayings are true, but they are. We're, yeah. all, we're all doing the best we can. Right. And we're all right where we are. Right. It was hard for me with my personality type. I tend to be more like OCD, very um, detail oriented. Try to, like I write a set before I go on stage I went to some shitty hookah lounge last night to do comedy. Don't don't you have your stuff in different inks, colors? Yes, ink? yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Like even this. This yeah. is uh different yeah, colors. See, I have yeah. different colors. I have things mm -hmm. underlined because mm -hmm. I'm kind of dyslexic. Yeah, I have well, processing yin delay. And yang, it's good and bad. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and I do I prep as much as I can mm -hmm. for pretty much everything that I do. Mm -hmm. And it's good and bad because it takes a long time. I'm very specific. Um I always looked at comedians that could just like be eating a hamburger right before their set, not even thinking about their comedy and just go on stage. Well, that's what you think though, too, though. No, I'm just yeah. saying that's no, the other thing. We but don't I've, know. I've seen some guys just, or women just talking, talking, talking about their weekend and whatever. That's and then kinda, they go on stage. That's kind of my like, approach. Yes. But, but you don't know the I'm internal. Saying. I don't know the internal. No. What I'm saying is like, if you saw me before a show, I'm like, writing stuff we down. Did a, we did I a have TV a... taping together. Yeah. Which one was that? Um, the, uh... It was at the improv during the day. Oh, we did do yeah. a TV taping yeah. together. I was I... amazed at all the cards you had with all the writing on oh, it. Oh my and... gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, good for you though. But that's, that's what you do. That's not my process and it's yours and that's totally fine. And that's how I prep. Be... Uh, part of the reason I do that is my memory is really poor. So as soon as I get up there, if I have a new joke or I have a new thing that I haven't practiced a ton and done it on stage a ton, I'm going to forget it. So I write these little things. I, I have this whole system. Like I put a set list in my pocket before every set. It doesn't matter if I'm at a bowling alley. I look at it right before I get on stage. It's just my process. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a ritual or routine. If I didn't look at it, would I know the joke? Sure, of course. But it's almost like if I don't have it, this throws off the yeah, whole set. That, that, that stuff puts more pressure on me. Yeah. I feel like I'm not going to remember this yes, list. But you saying those things to me took me out of that, of like thinking that I could control yeah. Michael's set or yeah. how it turned out. I yeah. don't, I can't. Yeah. All I can do is prep him as well as I can. The comedians, they all came in. They gave up their time and energy. We did these kick-ass jokes. Now, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. We also, that's the deal with, I was listening to another podcast. It's actually Dana Carvey and Spade's podcast about about um, you know SNL. Yeah, and they had Ray Romano on there. Yeah, and I'm I'm paraphrasing, but Ray uh, basically said that I actually didn't know this, but he said that you know he had done like the Young Comedian special and he had yeah. some late night stuff, and and uh, at that point in time, which I think might have even been pre internet, there was no de development deal was the only thing that was it. Yeah. There weren't all yeah. these avenues, right? <laughs> And he got um, uh, news radio and he got fired on the second day. Oh, I didn't know that. He got fired on the second day at 6 a.m. in the morning, he said his agent called and they went in a different direction and they, they hired, they replaced him with Joe Rogan. Oh, right? wow. Wow. And as a comedian and all the stuff we talked about, I can only imagine that Ray probably thought that was it, right? He probably thought that was it. Like, that's it, and he's no good, and uh, he's not cut off for this business, and I'm assuming, do you know what I mean? And all these horrible things, and then, but look look what was in store for him too, right? So, 
And I know that's a big thing to trust all the time, not yeah. as comedians in life. Right. I would hope that people watching this, that's that stuff that they get out of your podcast is you really don't know, right? You're just supposed to show up and um, you just, just show up. And I, as a comedian, I imagined how horrible he felt about that and all the things he led himself to believe and none of them turned out to be true. Yeah. Look, like, look what happened. Yeah. So you don't even know. It's always about, we just focus on the good stuff, but also you don't even know what the bad stuff has in store for you. You really don't. Oh yeah. You, you don't know all the, right. not lessons, you just don't even know all the, Right. O opportunity seems to only be put in the category of something good. Yeah. But opportunity exists all the time just by. Yeah. And sometimes saying no to something else will bring you this. Like that's how I got um, to meet Michael and the documentary and all that stuff is because I left a writing job. So when he asked me to I help him. I remember that too, actually. I, I never would have been able to if I didn't leave the writing job, which I was working 10, 12 hours a yeah, day. I, I remember that was the actually, I, I now that you're saying that, I remember you saying that that was the reason why you were staying and the reason why you would leave is to present opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it came, but I had to trust that and, and it was really scary to leave security for not security. Well, find the funny, right? But how about just trust? I mean, like I, what I think is interesting I, I, listen, I love America. I don't love it too much, but I love it. I, 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 I love our <laughs> yeah, country, yeah, yeah. but I was just going to talk about a philosophy that we have here. And the philosophy we have here is we're taught to achieve, right? Yes. We're all taught to achieve. And some people achieve and some don't. Some comedians achieve and some don't. But we are what we are not taught is how to deal with shit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. everybody has shit to deal with. Yeah, everybody. everybody has a different coping mechanism. So just funny, like maybe we should, you know, help each other deal with shit. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's basically the show. He just said it. <laughs> Everybody learned to deal with shit. That's what finding the funny is all about. Yeah, and that's, that really that is what it is. It, that it, is, it, what it is, is it's though. two different perspectives. So you have the same situation, whether it be someone fell off a bike and they hurt themselves. Well, you could be really sad. You could focus on the fact that your bike isn't working anymore. You can focus on the fact that you're going to get in trouble. Uh, what hurts on your knee now because it, or you can go, holy cow, did someone get that on tape? Or wow, I have a great story now. Or hey, maybe I'll get a new bike because this one's all, all bent up. Or now I'll get empathy. Or maybe I get ice cream for dinner. There's so many different ways to think of a situation. And that's what I love about what we do is we're finding the funny in it. You know? And presenting, yeah, just putting that out there. But that's not even enough for us yeah. though, as comedians. We're not, this, wor this world's about achieving. It's right. not enough to just go, oh yeah, go, go out there, Lisa, and go out there, Peter, and just speak your truth, and and, yeah. and, and, then, and then that'll be that. No, I mean, there's, you know, amongst other comedians, uh, just the business itself, it, it, it is also about achieving. So, yeah. I mean, my, my wife practices Buddhism mm -hmm. and, um, for a while. That's why it's Buddhism instead of Buddhism. But, um, but she was <laughs> telling me this sort of a story that I think of I don't know what you want to call it, a story or whatever, but she's like, you know, it's, it's to the point you just said, well, it could be snowing outside, right? And one person could look at the snow and be like, uh, it's going to make my life miserable. I have to leave earlier right. for work. And, uh, you know, I'm, it's going to take longer to get there. And it's a big pain in the ass, the snow. And then another person could look at the snow and be like, oh, look at how peaceful it is. It's yeah. coating everything and right. everything's white and it's still, right? Right. But it's still just snow. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's all perspective. It's all what you look for in it. So what you concentrate on. Right. And we, that's what I was saying. I, you know, we like to think we have control over the crowd, but we don't know. You, yeah. you listed a whole bunch of things. So when you do a joke, how do you know which thing that they relate to? Is it this or that or this or that? It's not the one thing that we just said. It's a world of things that make people find something funny. And we were talking about at the beginning and then what that funny does to them. Are there any bits right now that you're working on that you're like excited about mm. new stuff that you're just like, oh, this is, I can't wait till this gets worked out. Well, I, uh, one I'm working on, I, uh, this is what's funny about why it's difficult, but I had a friend, my very dear friend, uh, kill himself. He's my like childhood friend. Right. And, um, and, uh, 
you, you know, you can't really talk about suicide. You can't really even talk about death on stage. That's the genesis for this thought. I was just going to tell you about, and it also is perspective, but the gist of the joke is perspective, right? Like, so I, uh, I'm, I've tried it a few times on stage and I'm like, so, um, I said, if, if you're in a place in your life where you're thinking that you'd like to die, uh, I mean, that's like a really intense place to be in. Right. Mm -hmm. And also it's difficult to talk about because it, people don't understand the pressure that comes with those kind of thoughts. Right. So people don't really want right. to hear you talk about, um, wanting to die. Right. But if you s phrase it differently, uh, like, uh, you're not afraid of dying, then that sounds kind of sexy mm -hmm. and cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I go, so if you're thinking you want to die, but you're afraid of what people might think about the fact that you think that, and I go in those go hand in hand, wow. I go, just phrase it differently. You could be like, I'm not afraid to die. And uh, I like, um, toast and taking baths. <laughs> and uh, I like meditating in my car yeah. in the garage with the engine running. And, um, <laughs> That's awesome. But it's all just uh, yeah. words, right? It's the all just perspective, it, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah, like, you're a badass if you're not afraid to die. Right, exactly. And there's something wrong with you right? if you want to kill yourself. So which is it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. It Again, perspective. That's a really deep I can't wait to see that work out. I've been on talking stage. about death a little bit here and there. And it's like almost like you ever have you ever said the word diarrhea on stage? Man, that's a showstopper. So <laughs> no. is talking about death. Uh, have you mentioned I, death at all? Um I actually I'm just I, I've never done it on stage. I just wrote down the concept um about my parents because my parents are getting to that age. Mm -hmm. And um I talk to them both because I want them to be of sound mind and body to tell me what they want. Do you want a funeral? Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be cremated? Like what, how do you see mm -hmm. it? How do you mm -hmm. want me to honor mm -hmm. you in the end? And both of them were like, we want to be cremated, which blew my mind because we're cat, they are Catholic. Mm -hmm. And you know, my mom was all about, we need to talk to the pastor to make sure that cremation doesn't mean I'm going to go to hell. Mm. And once we talked to the pastor and he said, no, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that you, because your body, your spirit leaves your body, you know? And so the body basically is going to decompose anyway in a casket if that's mm -hmm. what you choose. So my whole thing was how do I make that relatable and funny and, but also talk about the scary part. And so my first thing was like that I talked to both my parents about it and they both want to be cremated. And I'm like, okay, well, all right, so then I'll, we'll have the urn and the whole thing. And then it was then just finding the different things about that, like where do you spread their ashes and who goes first and it, it, you know, it, it, who wants it, the I found it trip. very challenging to talk about death. It just it's weirds really, people out. Yeah, like the things that Michael went through, it was fascinating to me because I had never thought before that, I had never thought about telling my son what my plan was. Cause I don't, I could walk out and get hit by a bus and my kid would never know. Did I want to get cremated? Did, what do, who do I want at the funeral? Like, do I even want a big thing or like how he can best honor me? So now I think I have it worked out. So now I'm going to tell him that, um, cause he's being a little shit right now. So mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's being really distant. So maybe I'm, have two different lists. <laughs> That's you know perfect. I mean? Maybe That's have two what I lists, mean. You know? That's what I mean. That's fantastic. Maybe yeah. have the first one. If you're feeling like this, read this list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we're close. What was that? So Princess Bride was that the movie? Then, yeah, then yeah, you can yeah, maybe yeah. outthink what, maybe he'll be looking at the two envelopes and he'll be like, if I'm thinking like this, then she wanted me to open this one. So yeah. maybe I should open the other one. Right, yeah. right. Take the blue pill. And then just have both lists be the same. Don't Yeah, uh, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's exactly Tell them only, it. Only, only, only read only, one of these. You only, can only read one, but they're the same list. But even yeah. at the end, yeah. it's probably he's going to undo it and it'll be a dick joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so me, so me. Well, like when you, when you keep opening a present, that it's a bigger yeah, box, yeah, and a smaller yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Here's your inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. It's this dick joke. Yeah, it's my right. favorite dick mm-hmm. joke. Great. <laughs> I would be so me. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Find the Funny. Um, this is where you can find Peter. Where can they find your work? Oh, do you have a website? Nah, or? I'm on like Instagram and Facebook, but you know, okay. I'm mostly Peter working in my Berman. mind. Yeah. Uh, what's your at? I think it's at Peter oh, Berman. Are you joking? No, <laughs> I'm Lisa Alvarado comedian. So some people have like different. Wait a minute. Hold, this is how old he hold. is. <laughs> He's taking his phone out as we speak to find out. Hold, please. He doesn't even know his own handle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's on Instagram. It's Peter underscore Berman. Okay, see. And then I think Facebook. It's maybe just Peter Berman. Okay. I don't know. I mean, All right. We'll um we'll put links in the description. Thank yeah, you guys. You do that. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah. Description, show notes, whatever the hell it is, something down there. You'll be able to click and see more of Peter's work. And thank you so much for oh being my a gosh. part of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody, uh, really, I hope they listen to this podcast and I hope they oh. end up getting an opportunity to watch the documentary. And I hope that from your podcast, they're able to appreciate all the layers of the documentary too I yeah really and comedy and life and how we yeah. should be treating one another and everybody just be good to yourselves yes. and uh and be good to one another exactly that's yeah. yeah that's it bye guys we'll see you in two weeks i hope everybody listen to my daughter and see it and laughing with her because she is very funny <laughs>